Hi guys, welcome to another video. And uh, this is going to be for week three, basic algebra. So let's go straight into it. Okay, so these are the notes. Uh, if you haven't got these, you can you know get them from Google Classroom or you know ask me and I'll I'll print them out for you. Um, give them to you in lesson. So hopefully by the end of the lesson you'll be able to simplify and collect the like terms uh, for algebraic expressions. Uh, expand algebraic expressions and factorize algebraic expression. I'll explain what these mean. Uh, first of all, we need to know the uh, basics first. Um, how to multiply and divide when you have a negative number. So uh, the rule is when the signs of the numbers are the same, the answer is a positive number. Uh, when the signs of the numbers are different, the answer is a negative number. So for example, when you multiply two positive numbers together, you'll get a positive answer. When you multiply two negative numbers, you'll get a positive answer. Um, or the, similarly, you know, the same works for dividing as well. Yeah, so when the symbols are the same, you'll get a positive answer. If the symbols are different, so if one number is a positive, multiplied by negative number, you'll get a negative answer. Yeah, and similarly, if it's uh, dividing as well, similar sort of thing, okay? So let's try these examples. Um, let me just get my pen. Minus five times positive four. So we know that's positive. I know we can't see the, the plus sign, so technically there is a plus sign there, an invisible positive there. Um, so this is a negative times a positive. So negative times a positive gets gives you a negative answer. And five times four is 20. Yeah, let's do one B. 45 divided by minus nine. So positive divided by negative, you're gonna get a negative answer. And how many nines go to 45? Five times, yeah. And minus three times minus three well a minus times a minus gives you a positive you don't need to put the plus you know so for your answer you can just leave it without a, a symbol and three times three is just nine so we know that's positive yeah um and one d negative times a negative is a positive again and how many sevens go to 21 is three yeah so to practice these if you want to if you want to practice, try the next ones yourself. Uh, pause the video, give them a go, and unpause it when you're ready. Okay, let's go through these. So seven times minus four, so that's gonna be minus 28. 64 divided by minus four, that's gonna be minus only four is going to 64, you should know. If you're not sure, uh, just type it in your calculator, but it's 16. Um, eight times, minus eight times my, minus three, that's gonna be positive 24. Um, minus divided by minus, that's a positive, and that's gonna be seven. Um, and then these last ones, these are a little bit tricky, these ones. So these have got um, variables in there. So they've got, that's got a Y variable. And this next one's got an X variable in it as well. So that's literally just means six Y times by minus five Y. So you just multiply the numbers first. Let's do that first. So six times minus five. Well, a positive times a negative is gonna give you a negative and six times five is 30. And y times y, that's going to give you y squared. Yes, the squared is just on the y. Um, next one, you've got minus 90x divided by minus 9x. Um, you know what? I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to do it like this. This is the same as this. Yeah, this question right here is the same as that. All I've done, all I've done is just re rewritten it. Um, this will cancel with this, you know, so that will disappear. 
so the x actually disappears so that's gone and now the number minus divided by minus you're going to get positive definitely and how many nines go into 90 it's 10 so 10 should be your answer for that one the x disappears yeah so if you put 10x as your answer or 10x squared or anything else it would be wrong yes yeah, so just be careful with things like that let's move on uh, adding and subtracting numbers with different signs so when you adding and subtracting me personally i think of it as um think of the number line yep if you use a number line to add and take away um it's it's a really good way of thinking about it and and getting your answer so the same rules apply above if the signs are side by side i'll explain what this means in a minute okay so um You've got minus three, you're gonna add six. So like I said, use a number line if you're not sure. I can do, you know, sometimes I can see it in my head. Uh, so I'm on minus three, so that's where I am. And then I'm gonna add six. So it's six jumps to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So how many jumps was that? Six jumps to the, to the right, yeah? Cause it's getting warmer, anything going this way is getting warmer if it was minus six obviously it's getting colder it'd go the other way but since it's going this way so that's minus three that's going to be minus two that's minus one that's zero right there one two and that's three yeah so your answer is going to be positive three as your answer or you could have done um you could have done these the other way around you could have said six positive which is positive six we know it's positive six take away three if you think of it like that it's the same thing six take away three you know is three yeah so you still get same answer so whether you do it this way using the number line or you do it this way it makes no difference you're still going to get the same answer let's have a look at 2b uh we've got four minus minus six it looks a bit weird doesn't it but basically what you're doing is you you've got a positive four you're you're on positive four on the number line and you're going to take away minus six so that minus is with that six um so in this case i would use those same rules that we used before so you know like i said here the same rules apply above if the signs are side by side so these, these are side by side literally side by side you've got minus with a minus and uh, what did we say in the rules? Minus with a minus changes to a plus. So you've got four, and these signs now change to a plus. So you've got four plus six, which is, we know is 10. Yeah, so uh, yeah, anything like that. If it's literally side by side like this, use those funny rules. Let me just recap on the rules. So a plus and a plus gives you a plus. Plus and a minus together gives you a minus. Minus and a plus gives you a minus. Minus and a minus gives you a plus. Yeah, so just remember these funny rules. Uh, but these only apply if they're side by side like this, or when you're multiplying and dividing like in the previous examples. Yep, let's so just be careful. Have a go of the next practice questions. Pause the video. And when you're ready, just unpause it. Okay, let's go through these. So, minus 6 plus 15. So, again, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to do it this way. 15 minus 6 is the same thing. And that's going to be 9. Yep. That's your answer. Uh, that's the same as 7 plus 19, which gives you 26. That's the same as... Uh, let's write underneath 17 that's going to change to a minus 25 uh oh a bit of a trick on this one so 17 minus 25 so i'm on 17 let's see i'm gonna do the number line for this mm. so i'm here I'm going to minus 25, so it's going, in fact, 
I tell you what, let's put zero here just uh, as a big jump going from that to that you're going to minus 17 um, and I need to do another jump backwards uh, so the difference between minus 17 and 25 that's an extra eight isn't it so I end up on minus eight so instead of doing little little jumps you know if you, instead of doing one jump at a time 25 jumps you'll be there forever just do one big jump from 17 go to go from 17 to zero see how many uh, well, that's obviously going to be minus 17. see what you've got left and in this case i had to jump another eight steps so just do another big jump from zero to minus eight and that in total from there to there is taking away 25 altogether and you end up on minus eight so that's a really good way of doing it you know if, if you're not sure uh what the answer is uh you can use the number line like this is one i think it's a really good way of doing it yeah but you get your answer minus eight uh let's do this one seven take away 19 again i'm going to do the same thing again you're on positive seven you're here uh, I'm going to jump to zero first. Let's do a big jump to zero. That's obviously taken away seven. How much more do I need to jump? If I was taking away 19, I need an extra 12 to go. Yeah. So I need to jump for another 12 because all together, these two together gives me minus 19, doesn't it? So what do I end up on? Minus 12. Yeah, that's my answer. So again, I think it's a really good way of doing that. <clears throat> Just do big jumps um, on the number line, and you get your answer. Let's move on. Uh, 12x plus minus 17x. So this plus and a minus is going to give me a minus... So I'm on 12x, I'm going to take away 17x. So if I can do it on my head, um, that's going to give me, you could use the number line, but I can see, I can see the jumps in my head. Um, it's going to give me minus 5x. Yeah, you're still going to have the x as well. Um, think of it as apples. You know, you've got 12 apples, you're going to take away three apples. Very similar sort of concept. Yeah. So uh, in this case, you've got 12x, you're going to take away 17x. You end up with minus 5x. Yep. The fact that it's minus makes no difference. Um, the next one, oh, let's see. So I've got minus 17y. That doesn't change. This does change, though. See where I've got minus and the minus together here? That does change to a plus 7y. Um, I'm going to write that the other way around. So that's 7y minus 17y. That's what that is. Yeah, and again, <clears throat> I can see that in my head. If I'm on 7y... I'm on positive 7y. I'm going to take away 17y. I end up on minus 10y. Yep, and again, you can use the number line to uh, to help you if you're not sure. Let's move on. <clears throat> Simplifying and collecting like terms. So a collection of numbers, letters, and brackets, all multiplied, divided together. That's what a term is. So terms uh, are separated by plus and minus signs. So you know, like... You saw in the previous example, that is a term right there. That is a 12x, that's an x term. If we had um, a squared in there, that would be an x squared term like this one here. That's there you've got 5x squared. Um, so in this example, how many different terms does this expression have? See if we can simplify anything at all. 
Um, no, I don't think I can because this right here, this whole thing, that is an X, Y term. Doesn't go with anything else on here. Don't have any other X, Y terms. This is an X squared term. This is a Y term. And this is a Y squared term. And this is a number term. So I've got, how many have we got? One, two, three, four. I've got five different terms and they don't, they can't simplify with, with anything. Um, I can't simplify this at all, in fact. So in this example, it's just testing, you know, do you know your terms? Um, and you can't simplify, you can't physically, you can't add them together, you can't take them away. Even this y term with this y squared term, you can't physically add them together or take them away. That's a y term, that's a y squared term. Yeah, it's like apples and pears, they're totally different things. So um, the answer is one, two, three, four, five, five different terms. That's what I've got for that example. Yeah, so just as a, I just thought to show you um, this example, just to show you what um, different terms look like, and you can't simplify them. If you did have another uh, y squared in there, though, you could join it with that. If I had another number in there, if I had, let's say, plus 10, then I could join it with the plus 4. Yeah, these two do, do go together. But obviously, in this example, we don't. Yeah. Let's have a look at the next examples. In fact, if you want to try the next ones yourself, pause the video. And when you're ready, unpause it. Okay, let's go through these. So I'm going to separate these into um, the correct terms. So uh, this goes with this. Yeah, two uh, x. That's an x term. Goes with this x term. And let's do that in a different color. This number goes with that number. Yes, they go together. So all together, uh, 2x plus 5x, that's going to give me 7x. And the number minus 4 plus 6, you're on minus 4, you're going to plus 6, you're going to get plus 2. Yes, that's your final answer. 7x plus 2, you can't simplify that anymore. Let's move on. Uh, this is an x squared term, goes with this. Remember, the sign or the symbol goes with the term. You have to include it. That goes with that. Uh, this goes with this. Obviously, in the exam, you can't use colored pens, can you? But you could probably use uh, different shapes to, to uh, um, separate these. In fact, I'll show you in a minute how to do that. Um, what answer are we going to get here? So let's do the x squared terms first. So x 5x squared plus 7x squared, that's going to give me 12x squared. Um, minus 3x, minus 4x. So minus 3x, you're on minus 3x. You're going to minus another 4x. That's getting colder. You're going to get... Where's my pen gone? minus 7x and i've still got a plus 9 on the end let's do that in a different color yeah i can't simplify that anymore that whole thing is my answer so you know like i said uh, use different shapes so let's say you're using a black pen in your exam how do we separate these so i would use shape for that uh, the same shape for that um, a circle for this, 
and a circle for this. There you go. See, see how I separated them. Um, <clears throat> so now, um, this goes with this. So four x y take away six x y. That gives me minus two x y and minus two x cubed plus five x cubed. That's going to give me plus three x cubed. Again, you can write this in any order, by the way. You could have said 3x cubed first and the minus 2xy here on this side. Makes no difference. Both answers are perfectly fine. Yep, so whether you write like this or like this, just make sure the symbols are correct. Yep, the 3x squared has to be, sorry, the 3x cubed has to be positive. The 2xy has to be negative whichever order you write it in. Let's do the same for this one. So this goes with this. And this goes with this. Okay, you don't need to put the shapes if you, if you already know it, then it's fine, but I recommend doing it. I think it's just, I think it just helps separate them. <clears throat> and it just looks a lot easier to see now. Um, so now I've got 5xy, take away 2xy, that gives me 3xy, um, plus 2y minus 9y, that's going to give me minus 7y. Yeah, and again, you can use the um, number line if you're not sure. Okay, uh, let's move on. <clears throat> A squared plus A squared plus A squared. Okay, so I've got one of those plus another one of those plus another one of those. So I've got three of those, whatever they are. In this case, A squared. That's all it is. So don't let that put you off. <clears throat> Remember, it's just A squared as well. It's not going to be A to the power six. Be very careful. Those are to do with the indices rules, which we're going to do in another lesson. Um, <clears throat> technically, you've got one apple plus another apple plus another apple. You've got three apples. That's all it is. And the last one in this section. Um, you could uh, just simplify this by... Uh, so that whole term on the top is being divided by two. So this term is being divided by two and this term is being divided by two. So how many twos go into that is once, and two goes to that three times, which gives you um, y plus three y, which can be simplified even further. That's one y plus another three y that gives you four y. Yep. Uh, or you could have said um, 8y altogether at the top divided by 2, which gives you 4y. It's the same thing. Yeah, whichever way. Two different ways of doing that one. Let's move on. <clears throat> substitution. Okay, so substitution is a very, very useful topic. Uh, it comes up time and time again in lots of various, various uh, things that we do in uh, GCSE maths. Um, let's have a look at this example. So they've given us an equation, y equals two x plus seven. Work out the value of y when x equals four. So you're gonna replace the x with a four. Let's do that. So it'll be two. In fact, I'll put it in brackets. I'm not even gonna work it out yet. Um, two, and in brackets put four there. And we still got plus seven on the end. So two times four is eight. You know, if it's side by side, you know there's an invisible time sign there. Still got this. Uh, eight plus seven, that gives you 15. Yep. Part B, work out the value of y when x is minus three. Okay, so y is equal to two. And in brackets, let's put minus three. Let's just substitute the x. We've still got that. Uh, two times minus three, that's going to give you minus six. I've still got that. 
So minus six plus seven, or you can think of it as seven take away six, which gives you one. Yeah, and that's your answer. Um, have a go over the next ones yourself. Try them. Um, give them a go and uh, unpause the video when you're when you're done. Okay, let's go through these. So, um, all I'm going to do first is I'm going to replace the letters with whatever they said. So I've got y equals. Mm, minus 10, minus 2, 2 there in brackets, and x is minus 5. See what I did? I just, all I did was just replace all the letters with <clears throat> whatever they said. And I put them in brackets as well because I think it helps. Okay, so um, let's leave that for now. Uh, minus 2 times 2 times, in fact, let's multiply these two together. 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. That goes there. And uh, we've got minus 10 there. Minus 2 times minus 10. So minus times a minus is going to give me a plus. 2 times 10 is 20. So it's technically it's 20 take away 10. Take away 10, which is 10. So you should have 10 as your answer. Yeah, if you didn't get 10 and you've gone wrong somewhere. So um, just do it step by step. Next one. Um, work out the value of y. So again, I'm just going to replace the letters. Um, so that's that squared. Okay. So if you think back to um, functional skills as well, think of uh, bid mass as well. Which one do you do first? So you should do the indices first. So in this case, that's your indices right there, minus 2 squared. So minus 2 squared means minus 2 times minus 2, which is positive 4. And 5 times 4 is 20. So it's 3 times 20, which is 60. That's your answer. Yeah, it should be a positive 60. Let's do the last one. Uh, work out the value of y. Uh, P is minus 2 cubed. Minus 2. Minus 3. Uh, minus 6 squared. Yep, again, let's do this. Minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2. So minus times a minus times a minus. So minus times a minus gives you a plus. Times another minus gives you a minus. So that's going to be a minus 8 for that bit there. Um, minus 6 squared, let's do that. So minus 6 squared literally means minus 6 times minus 6. So minus times a minus is a plus. So I've not touched this, not touched this. Minus 6 times minus 6 is 36. That's minus 8. Minus 2. Uh, 3 times 36, <clears throat> that's going to be... Let's work out the side here. 6, 3 is 18, that's 9 plus 1 is 10, 108, so it's going to be minus 108, okay, um, that's going to be minus 8 plus 2 times that, 216. So <clears throat> technically it's 216 take away 8 gives you 208. Yep, that's your answer. Let's move on. Um, expanding brackets. So this will be for single brackets. I'll show you double brackets in a minute as well. But we need to know how to expand brackets. So when you get anything like this, 
that three is multiplying all, everything in that in that bracket. So that three is multiplying this, and it's multiplying this. So uh, three times two x. That's going to give you six x, and three times five gives you positive fifteen. Yep. Uh, usually it's, it'll say expand and simplify. We can't simplify this anyway. That's an X term. That's a number term. So you just leave it like that. Yep. Try the next next ones yourself. Pause the video when you're ready. Just unpause it. Okay. Let's go through these. So this times this gives you 12 AB. Uh, and this times this gives you four times minus two is minus eight. And you're going to get AC for that. Yep, that's the answer for that one. Uh, this one with this one, minus 12p squared. This one with this one, um, minus 28 q cubed yep that's your answer for that one <clears throat> next one uh this one with this one i think it's a good idea you know if you do draw the arrows i think it's a good idea just to remind yourself what you're doing um that's going to give you minus six a b squared and this one with this one gives you positive 4ac yep this one with this one um, minus 6 um oh a squared with a squared so that's going to be a to the power 4 um so if you're not sure about that, uh, basically it's to do with the indices rules. When you, uh, basically you just add the powers, yeah. So if you've got the same variables, in this case a squared times a squared, you add the powers. So two plus two gives you four. Um, and this one with this one gives you positive four. Uh, again, add the powers. There's going to be a little one there. So if it's just A on its own, technically there's a little one there. Add the powers, you'll get A cubed. Yep, that's your answer for that one. Let's move on. Okay, so now let's have a look at multiplying double brackets. So again, everything in this brackets is multiplying everything in this brackets. Let me rewrite it x minus 6 is multiplying everything in this brackets. So this x is multiplying this. So x times x is x squared. Uh, this times this gives you plus 2x. This with this gives you minus 6x and this one with this one gives you minus 12. Yeah. So <clears throat> you should have should have something like this, you know, when you when you when you expand double brackets. Um, but we're not finished yet because you have to simplify it as well. And when you simplify it, you'll see that you've got a x term here and an x term here as well so those go together um so you're going to end up with x squared not touch that 2x minus 6x so you're on positive 2 you're going to minus 6 so if you think of the number line you're on positive 2 minus 6 you're going to end up on minus 4x yep and we still got minus 12 on the end so you should end up with three terms whenever you expand usually you, you end up with three terms most most of the time um there are certain cases where you don't 
but most of the time you will get three different terms. Uh, try the next ones yourself. Pause the video. Um, when you're ready, just unpause it. Okay, let's go for this. So um, I'm going to rewrite it here. So 2p minus 4, 3p plus 1. So this one, this. I always draw the arrows. I think it's a good idea. Uh, 6p squared. This one with this one gives me plus 2p. This one, this one, it's minus 12p. And this one with this one, it's minus 4. So these go together. And your final answer should be 6p squared. Um, minus 10p minus 4. Yep, that's that one done. Let's do the next one. Uh, this one with this one gives you that. This one with this one gives you minus 9y. This one with this one is um, minus 6y. And this one with this one gives you positive 6. Yep, uh, these two go together. I uh, should get. 9y squared <clears throat> minus 9y minus 6y so you're on minus 9 you're going to take away 6 it's getting colder so you're going to get minus uh, fifteen y okay. plus 6 yeah and um, let's do the next one This one, this one gives you positive 9p squared. This one, this one is minus 15p. Yep, this one, this one is positive 6p. And this one, this one is minus 10. Yep. These two go together. That gives you 9p squared um, <clears throat> plus 6 minus 15. Plus 6 minus 15, you're going to end up with uh, minus 9p minus 10. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, that's your answer. Um, last one before we moved on, move on to the uh, move on to factorizing. Um, slightly different one. Okay, so we've got uh, expand and simplify this. So this this literally means well, this squared means everything in that brackets multiplied by itself. So we can rewrite this as. 3x plus 5 multiplied by 3x plus 5. That's what that means. Yeah, so it's a good idea just to rewrite it. That's what that means. Um, and just do the same again. So this with this. 9x squared. This with this is plus 15x. This with this gives you another 15x. And this with this is plus 25. Yep, so that goes with that. You'll get plus 30x plus 
plus 25. Yeah, that's your answer. So just be careful, don't fall in that trap of saying, oh, it's 9x squared plus 25. Completely wrong. Yeah. So um, don't fall into that trap. Do always remember that it's just, it's two, it's double brackets, essentially. Yeah. So just be careful. Right. Let's move on to uh, factorizing. And factorizing, what all fa all it means is, um, <clears throat> okay, let's move on to factorizing. And all factorizing is, is just putting brackets in. So it's the opposite of what we've just been doing. So expanding was getting rid of brackets. Expanding is putting brackets back in. So this is exact opposite of multiplying out brackets. Take out the biggest number that goes into all the terms. So that's the first step. You take out the biggest number. So what you're doing is you're extracting the biggest factor. Do you guys remember about factors from all the terms? Yeah. Um, and then for each letter in turn, take out the highest power, e.g. if you've got um, an x or if you've got an x squared, uh, you have to take out the highest one out of both terms at the same time, okay? So if one's got an x term, one's got an x squared term, the highest power of x you can take out of both terms is just one x. Yeah, you can't take out the x squared because it's um, it's not in both. Um, and then you open your brackets and fill in all the bits needed to reproduce each term. Okay, right, so it sounds a bit complicated, but, you know, when you do, when you do it, step by step it's just it's not too bad so factorize this so you've got 3x squared plus 6x so there are your two different terms so what's the biggest number what's the biggest factor we can take out of both terms at the same time yeah so we can't take out six because i know six is here but that's only got three so the biggest number we can take out is a three Okay, um, and what's the biggest x we can take out? Well, the biggest x we can take out is not x squared, because this doesn't have an x squared. This has only got an x. So the biggest term, biggest x I can take out is just one x. Then you open your brackets, and what you're left with, basically, remember, expanding brackets was multiplying, wasn't it? So factorizing is the opposite of that, which is technically what you're doing is dividing by this right here. So if you're not sure what goes in the brackets, what you can do is take this whole term here, 3x squared. The opposite of multiply is divide by this term right here, the 3x that you've taken out. What you're left with, well, the 3 cancels out with the 3. And that x cancels out one of these x's. You're just left with one x on its own. Yeah, a lot of people do this in their head, though. Yeah, but if you're not sure, you can you can you can think of it like this. Yeah, you're just dividing by this term that you've just taken out. Okay, uh, let's do the same for the other one as well. Let me just delete that one second. It's just a little bit messy. Right. Um, so now we've got 6x being divided by 3x. Um, well, the x cancels out with the x. That's gone. 3 goes into that once. 3 goes into that twice. You're just left with 2 on its own. And it's a positive 2. Yeah. And a good way of checking that you've done it right, if you expand this, if you say this multiplied by this, that gives you 3x squared, that's that bit there. And this multiplied by this gives you 6x, which is that. So you've done it right. You know, do check that you've done it right um, by expanding this. You don't have to, but I think it's a good idea. You know, if you're not too sure, just test it, see if it works. And if not, obviously you've gone wrong somewhere. So uh, this is our final answer, by the way. That's our factorized answer. Yeah, a uh, little bit fiddly, a little bit weird, uh, but once you get your head around it, you know it's. Um, hopefully, you'll you'll get used to it. So, try the next questions yourself.
um, pause the video and when you're ready just unpause it okay let's try this so what's the biggest number i can take out definitely two is the biggest one uh biggest x i could take out is x biggest y i could take out is y you should be left with four x and that's it for that term uh plus just y on its own the difference between that and that is just one y yep should be right if you expand this you should get the original you can double check it that's that one done um next one biggest number i could take out is three biggest x is x squared biggest y is one y open your brackets five x for that one that's that done um and oh just it's going to be plus, just plus one and i'll tell you why you know if you do this the original three x squared y divided by this term right here 3x squared y they'll all cancel each other out that cancels with that that cancels with that that cancels with that that's going to be a one that's going to be one one over one is just one and you can again you could you can test out this way as well if you do if you expand this this multiplied by this you're going to get the original which i've just covered up sorry uh so if you just expand it you should get the original yes that's why it's a plus one but if you're not sure just uh, use that over that and just cancel it down. Yeah, I'll leave that there, in fact. Let's do the next one. Um, biggest number is 18. Uh, A squared. B squared. Open brackets. Again, that's going to be 1. Plus... Uh, two. Um, that's going to leave you with a to the power four, and that's it. Yeah, if you expand that, you should get the original. Just double check it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the answer for that one. Um, let's do the next one. Uh, biggest number is. That's exactly the same. <laughs> Let's skip that one. I uh, forgot to change that. Right, mental note. Somebody remind me to change that question. Just did a copy and paste job there, didn't I? Uh, let's go on to E then. Um, biggest number I could take out is 16. Just 1x. Um, I can't take any A's out at all because that doesn't have A. Um, how, how many B's can I take out? Just one B. Open your brackets. That's going to be 4. 16 times 4 gives you 64. Um, and one B. Yep. Plus one um, X. Definitely this A cubed, we need to include that there. And that's it. Yep, that should be your answer for that one. And the last one, three is the biggest number. Um, I can't take any X's out because that hasn't got X. Can't take any Y's out either, Y squares, I can't take them out. Uh, A, no, I can't take A out either. B is the only thing I can take out because that's that's in both of them and I can only take out one B anyway open your brackets uh, that's gonna be 8 X Y squared that's it for that one plus um, a B that's it yeah 
just be careful just make sure that the terms are in there's the variable is in both terms and uh, the you know the variable that you take out uh otherwise they're going to go inside the brackets yeah um have a go over the extension questions and again you know once you're ready just unpause the video um, and i'll go through them Okay, let's go through these. So work out the value of 3x minus 4y when x equals 3 and y equals 2. So this is substitution. Um, so x is 3 and y is 2. Yeah, so all I'm going to just replace x and y. That's going to be 9 minus 8, which gives you 1. Let's answer for that one. Um, work out the value of this when p is 2, again, substitution. So p is 2, q is minus 7. Let's do that in brackets as well. Minus 3, okay, over 4. All right, we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, well, minus 7, minus 3, let's do that first. Let's do the, bracket. let's do the brackets first. Minus 7, minus 3. Uh, so you're on minus seven you can have minus three it's getting colder so it's going to give you minus 10. we still got that <clears throat> two times minus 10 is minus 20 over four uh so minus 20 divided by four definitely a minus for your answer because a negative uh, negative divided by a positive is going to give you a negative answer and how many fours go to 20? Five times. Yeah, that's your answer. Um, simplify these, okay. Um, well, the numbers go together. Two times three is gonna give you six. And x times y, it's just x, y. Can't simplify it anymore. Simplify the this, uh, well, this goes with this and this goes with this um so that's going to be 5x take away 2x 3x um plus 3y plus another y that's going to give you plus 4y yeah that's your answer for that one part c what's y times y times y well that's going to be y to the power 3. Yep, <clears throat> don't make the ma mistake of saying it's 3y, that's it's not the case at all. Um, so anything uh, anything to do with powers is to do with multiplying by itself, so you've got y to the power 3. Yeah, if it was y plus y plus y, then yes, that would be y, uh, that would be uh, 3y, but it's not, it's not adding, it's multiplying. Yep, still getting mixed up. Well, let's move on. Simplify this, uh, okay, so this goes with this, this goes with this. Uh, what's that going to give us? 3p take away p is 2p, <clears throat> and that's going to give us plus 4q. Yep, that's that one done. Simplify this. Um, well, I've got three of those, take away one of those, it's going to give us two of those, whatever they are, in this case, y squared. Yeah, that's the answer for that one. Uh, 5c goes with that. Um, this goes with this. 5c take away 2c, that's going to give you 3c. Uh, 7d take away 3d, that's going to give you positive 4d. Um, next one, simplify that. 4 times 2 is 8. p times q is just pq. Or you can say qp, whichever. It's absolutely fine. But you should get 8pq or 8qp. 
Um, next one, factorize. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the biggest number actor, there is no, uh, well, you can't put one on the outside, just leave that blank. Biggest X I could take out is just one X. Uh, what you're left with, just X for that term and plus seven for that term. Yep, and if you expand it, you should get the original. Um, expand this, well, this with this gives you x squared. And this with this gives you plus 2x. Dead easy. Factorize completely, okay. Um, biggest number I could take out is 2. Biggest y I could take out is just 1y. That leaves me with 1y for that term. Um, minus... Two. Yeah, if you expand if you expand that you'll get the original. So that's right, there's your answer. If you can't you know if you're not sure on where that two came from, again you can just do that's your original. Yeah, you've got minus four y over two y. That cancels with that. Uh how many twos go into that? It is minus two, yeah. <clears throat> so you do get minus two. Uh, next one, expand that, you'll get y to the power four plus two y squared. Yeah, y times y gives you y squared. Factorize completely. Um, yeah, you're gonna get uh, biggest number I can take out is a three. I can't take anything else. Uh, that's the biggest number I can take out. And then um, just one X. I can't take a Y out because that hasn't got a Y. So open your brackets. Um, that's going to be two X minus three uh, Y. That's where the y comes from. Next one, expand and simplify this. Okay, let's do it step by step. Let's do. Let's get rid of the brackets. So this is one set of brackets, and this is a different set of brackets. Just be careful. Don't think of this as double brackets together. You know, like how we did before, expanding double brackets. It's not like that at all, because there's, it's separated by this minus two. So this is multiplying this and this. And this minus two is multiplying this and this. So it's different. It's the difference between this and double brackets together. They are, they are two different things. Um, so this is going to give us 15p plus 10. Uh, that's minus 10p plus 6. Yep, now we can simplify it. Um, this goes with this and this goes with this um so that gives us 5p 10 plus 6 is 16. yep that's your answer can't simplify it anymore that's your final answer last one um extension question six uh you can work out the amount of medicine uh, C milliliters to give to a child by using this formula. So you've got C equals MA over 150. M is the adult, uh, sorry, M is the age of the child in months. Okay. A is an adult dose in milliliters. Okay. Child is 30 months old. Uh, adult's dose is 40 milliliters. Work out the amount of medicine you can give to the child. Okay. Oh. Quite a lot of stuff, quite a lot of information in that. Right, so um, C is how much, what is C? C is uh, the medicine to give to a child. Okay, all right. Blimey, me. All right. Um, so it says take two five ml spoons for twice a day. Um, I'm going to start this off. I'll tell you what. So 
M is the age of the child in months. Okay. So, what is the age of the child? So, a child is 30 months old. There you go. So, I'm going to replace M with 30 times <clears throat> what's A? A is the adult dose. Adult dose is 40. Okay, there you go. Over 150. Um, is this a calculator? Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely going to be on the calculator. Might not be. Uh, you can very easily work out. I'm just being lazy. Um, if I stick that in my calculator, I'll get 8 for C, right? So C is uh, 8 milliliters. <clears throat> That's the amount of medicine to give to a child by using the formula, right? Work out the amount of medicine you can give to a child. Uh, is that your final answer? Why have they, so why have they mentioned this? Take two five ml spoons for twice a day. Um, work out the amount of medicine you can give to a child. Well, the amount of medicine to give to a child is using this formula. We've just used the formula. That's your final answer. It's eight milliliters. It's not asking for how much is it? Gonna, how much do you give a child for the day? It's just one. It's just the amount of medicine that you give. Just using the formula. And it's only two marks, so yeah, there's no other working out. It's going to be eight as your answer. Yeah, so don't let things like this put you off. Uh, just work it out. If it's two marks, there's not that much working out, just a little bit. Anyway, that's a, I think that's a foundation question anyway. Um, that's it for that one. Um, I shall see you in the next video.